This video is going to provide a step-by-step -step instruction on how to build your own auto-calculating form for testing proximity probes, specifically the proximity probes used in equipment monitoring applications. These probes are used to measure relative vibration, axial thrust, and equipment rotation. This is a similar form to the one I used in the instructional video which explained how to perform the function tests of this equipment. The form we're building here is going to actually be an improvement over the version I was using in the training videos because this one can be used for millimeters as well as mills and it can be used for any type of a proximity probe. The top of the form is going to contain the information from the spec sheet. You will need to uh, input the response rate which will be a number cell and the tolerance for the error which will need to be formatted for a percent. In this case I'm using mils instead of millimeters but it will work either way as long as you stay with one consistent unit of measure throughout the whole form. Alright, let's start putting in some formulas. This cell here is going to subtract the voltage measurements between the test points and we are going to continue this over all the cells below it. Next we will provide a benchmark for comparison by applying the change in distance to the expected rate of response by subtracting these two cells and multiplying by the, the ISF up top here. We need some parentheses to ensure the proper order of operation for this formula. Okay, continue doing this for all the cells below it. It looks like my autofill formula messed up a bit, so let's make sure each formula is referencing the right cell here. Okay, that's looking better. Now we're going to subtract these two cells to determine the amount of error in your testing data and continue this for all the cells below. And now we need to convert this error to a percentage since this is usually how the tolerance is rated. And now let's start building the formula. For this I just simply divide the error by the overall expected voltage and we'll extend this formula downward to the cells below. I think we will change these cells to a number with two decimal points. And I like to change the fill color of cells that contain formulas leaving just the white cells for inputting data. So we're done with the static portion of the form and we're now ready to begin doing the dynamic test portion. For the first formula we will need to convert the measured voltage to peak to peak voltage. This is done by doubling the RMS value and then multiplying that by the square root of 2. Next we need to convert the peak to peak voltage to measured travel by dividing the peak to peak voltage by the ISF specification rate. Next calculate the deviation by subtracting the calculated measurement by the actual peak to peak vibration set up on the simulation machine. The next step is to convert the error to a percentage. For this I divide the total peak to peak voltage by the actual distance dialed into the machine then subtract that number from the rated ISF to get the error, then divide this number by the ISF. Uh, make sure we use parentheses to get the order of operation right. Next we can change the cell format to percentage so it is displayed properly. And there you have it. Actually we can go in and add some conditional formatting and make it a little more spoofed up. Let's go uh, with icons to represent the status. This conditional formula will need to be referenced to the tolerance block. Alright, let's go ahead and drag this value to the rest of them. Now when we put the data in it should update and give you a pass-fail flag. Alright, let's build it again down here. Icon up, green check, down arrow, reference the tolerance. And for a final step, 
Let's uh, highlight all of the white cells that we will be entering data in and go to the cell properties and unlock them. And now when we go up to the sheet protection here and we protect the sheet it will lock all of the cells except for the ones that you told it to unlock. Now you can't access the cells that contain the titles or formulas. Now it's ready to be used. Mm -hmm.